Welcome friends. In this video, we'll be talking about the triptych digestion. Now, triptych digestion is something which is not uh, that much important independently because this is not carried out independently. It is a part of a large process, large set of processes which are required for structural biologists and also chemists to identify the protein sequences. Suppose you uh, find new protein. Now, if the protein sequence is unknown to us and you sequence the protein and you get a protein sequence out of it. Now, before uh, getting the sequence uh, out of uh, using a sequencer, if you have a protein sequence, you need to get the sequence and structure of the protein and the arrangement of all those molecules with each other via what is called MS or mass spectrometry. Because we know mass spectrometry is a thing which is giving us a, uh, this is the most advant advantageous uh, application, most advantageous technique that can give us the most appropriate result of a protein structure and unknown of an unknown protein. So once you get the unknown protein, you uh, can uh, place them uh, via this mass spec to get the answer of the structure and also the um, uh, components of that protein. Now before going into the detail uh, structure of this protein, you must uh, apply several different steps and one of those steps are this triptych digestion. So what is it? So we have uh, having a protein which is unknown. We don't know the structure and, uh, and what is uh, it is made up with. Then we uh, we need to take uh, we need to identify this structure and by doing uh, for doing it what we need to do is to chop up this protein into small little fragments because in both this AI, uh, MS spectrometry or NMR whatever type of spectrometry we are dealing with both this kind of spectrometry or NMR spectroscopy in this case mass spectroscopy in all these cases what we need we need small piece of protein fragments small peptide fragments but not a whole 3D structure of a protein because a whole protein cannot be detected like that the only way of get detecting it is simply break it down into small fragments. So for breaking the protein into small fragments, we require this important step which is called triptych digestion. Now as the term suggests, it is having uh, the digestion of the protein by using tri trypsin, right? So trypsin, we all know, it is a uh, three-letter code is TRP. This is, an, um, uh, this is a type of, uh, what you can say, it's an enzyme, trypsin. Uh, so this enzyme, Trypsin can act on protein, so we know that the protein sequences, that means inside the protein there are simply amino acid sequences are attached together, so amino acids are attached together like that. Now once we get amino acids at, attached like this, this trypsin can cleave the amino acid bond. Now what type of bond this trypsin usually cleaves? It cleaves the backbone of amino acid sequences which is called the peptide bond, right? So there are several different bonds in amino acid polypeptide chain but in this case we are talking about peptide bond. Now if this is the peptide bond, now this trypsin enzyme can uh, attack the peptide bond and can cleave the peptide bond. Now if you remember the basic biochemistry classes, you know the structure of the peptide bond is something like that, CO from one amino acid and here we go this NH from another amino acid for the next amino acid and on the middle we are having this green colored segment this green color linkage between this CO of amino acid 1 and NH of amino acid 2 this green color segment is called the peptide bond okay so this is what is called the peptide bond. Now this trypsin can go and cleave this peptide bond. Now this is a job of many proteases like trypsin, erapsin, pepsin and many different proteases are there. But why we choose trypsin over other type of proteases? Now that is an important question. So let's come here first. So what is our actual approach for this process is simply we take our uh, protein sequences uh, or simply lysate which is a lysate of cells where, which is containing the protein sequence. Now here comes the protein sequence or else what we can do we can run the gel. So from 2D we uh, get the uh, molecular weight of the protein to understand what is uh, the structure or what is the, what you can say, how large the protein is. So we run 2D gel. So from this 2D gel or from normal uh, polyacrylamide gel or uh, SDS page, we can isolate a segment which carries the protein and we elute that protein out from the gel using gel elution kits. Then after eluding it out, what we do? We do the in-gel digestion. Now here also, in, in case of this in-gel digestion, uh, we take the gel on its own and we apply this trypsin in this place. We apply trypsin in this place. So what this trypsin will do? It will cleave this peptide bond, so it will generate small fragments of peptides, which we get here. Now then what we'll do? We take this peptide and then we go 
and load this peptide onto the mass spec analyzer so that we can get the graph and using those graph we can detect what are the different type of atoms are making our uh, peptide chain so what are the different amino acids that we are having and by knowing those amino acids we can look for sequence similarities in uh, protein databases so that we get uh, a suitable structure of the protein for our purpose now there are two strategies of conducting this experiment one is simply uh, we take the complex protein and separate it via 2d gel electrophoresis then we take and uh, we do the digestion via the in gel process we take the in gel digestion second one is we take uh, the protein sequence we digest it first then we take it and simply we uh, load it onto the analyzer so one pathway is directly taking protein and uh, cleaving it and loading it to the analyzer another process is, uh, is first load the protein onto the gel then take the gel and then do the in gel digestion and then load it into the mass spec analyzer this is the strategy one and this is the strategy two now most of the cases the strategy two has been utilized because strategy two is a pretty common because when you are work working with an unknown protein it's pretty common to load that protein onto the SDS gel first and uh, try to understand the molecular weight of the protein with compare it with uh, the different type of protein ladders or protein markers right so then we look for the MS analysis and for the MS analysis we need to ready we need to make it small fragments and we can make these small fragments uh, simply by injecting this uh, what you can call this proteases like trypsin now the important feature and the spe speciality of trypsin or using trypsin is lying the important fact is that trypsin can cleave just after two different amino acid sequences usually it cleaves after as uh, it clips after lysine and arginine. Most of the cases it clips just after lysine. So if these are the different amino acid sequences linked uh, via these peptide bonds, we are not considering other bonds here, simply peptide bonds which are holding the backbone of all those amino acids together. So if you look at them, this trypsin molecule can only cleave. It's a, it is having a specificity of the peptide cleavage and the specificity is that it can only cleave after lysine and arginine. Okay. So it can only cleave after lysine or after arginine. So here it is, it is denoted with all this color are denoted this red arrow. So here it is arginine and it can cleave after arginine as you can see here. And this, uh, so you can see in all this direction, it can cleave after arginine. And also with this golden color, it is suggesting that it can cleave after the uh, lysine also. So here it says, here it is a golden. So golden and red regions are telling us that where this uh, arginine is going to cleave. Uh, this, sorry, this trypsin is going to cleave. So this is the region where trypsin can cleave because here we are having arginine and right after arginine it can cleave. Here we are having arginine and proline right next to each other. So, uh, so here this uh, la, trypsin can cleave. Here we are also having lysine. So it can cleave just after lysine. Here also lysine it can cleave just after lysine. So it can cleave. Uh, right next to lysine and arginine. This is the specificity uh, of trypsin that we are utilizing. And why we are utilizing a specific cleavage like that, not the random cleavage, because, because by choosing this trypsin, we make sure that whatever fragment, whatever small fragment we get, at the terminal of all these fragments, at the C terminal of all these fragments, there must be lysine or arginine. Rest of the lysine, uh, or irrespective of this lysine and arginine, there should not be any other type of amino acid sequences. Because they can only cleave after lysine and arginine. So whatever polypeptide segment, whatever short segment we get, their end point will be made either via lysine amino acid or it can have uh, the arginine amino acid. Okay. So that should be sure. Now what we get, uh, we get the idea of where in this protein sequence lysine and arginines are found. So we can get a little bit of idea from that. Okay. So these are the coding for this using trypsin. But also nowadays we not only use trypsin as a trypsin tryptic digestion but all, we also use different types of uh, proteases like chymotrypsin or we can also use endoproteinase. So if you use chymotrypsin, chymotrypsin usually cleaves after glutamic acid sequences. So here we go, here is the glutamic acid sequences uh, denoted with this green color region which uh, this, this, this green arrows are indicating the cleaving site of chymotrypsin. So these are the speciality of different type of proteases to cleave uh, right after some specific type of amino acid sequences. And again, uh, choosing them giving us the advantage to know that at the terminal point there should be our known amino acid sequence, right? So sequencing will be easier if we cut our protein with our known specific proteases. That's the important advantage in all these cases. But another important thing I must tell you, when we take arginine, uh, when you take this trypsin, it can cleave well uh, after lysine and arginine, but if there is 
the presence of a glutamic acid or aspartic acid which are say the charged res uh, residues right glutamic acid aspartic acid which has the negatively charged residues and also if there is a proline then the char then the cutting uh, or ability of digestion becomes less very very less if there is proline the ability of digestion is none so if so here if we look at in this case we are having arginine so here it is this is a place uh, for cutting by this uh, trypsin right so it can cut here because we are having arginine so it can just cut right after the arginine here but as we can see right after the arginine we are having proline attached so if any case if it is having proline next to our arginine in those cases it cannot digest that protein sequence for that point this is a very very exception of our trypsin digestion this is the only exception if we are having proline right right next to arginine or lysine whatever still it cannot digest because of the presence of the proline it creates a steric hindrance for the digestion on the other cases if you are having any uh, negatively charged uh, residues like if we are having uh, glutamic acid or aspartic acid right, right after arginine or lysine it can uh, cleave but the cleavage is not specific all the time okay so what we get most of the cases we get uh, the uh, part or give the small peptides having lysine or arginine at the terminal point if we use trypsin but if you use chymotrypsin the end point will be glutamic acid but it, because it can easily cleave right after glutamic acid so if we use uh, trypsin as well as chymotrypsin all, uh, all together in a vial in 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 a same protein sequence what it ensures is that we, are, we will be getting two different types of fragments one type of fragment that we are getting by the cleavage of trypsin is simply having this this blue colored fragments for example they are having lysine or arginine at their terminal point right now if we use chymotrypsin as our cleaving agent in those case in those case we will be also having fragments but at the end of the fragment we will uh, we'll be having sorry sorry it's not be g it should be glutamic acid glutamic acid i guess glutamic acid is l not l sorry it's r i i forget what is a single letter code but let's write it so it should be glutamic acid at the terminal point okay so here you go these are the step by step process so here is the first process again uh, either we can have a gel elution or uh, simply we can get it via the loading uh, without the loading we can get the lysate and from the lysate we take it onto the uh, uh, vial and we treat it with this trip, 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 trypsin or chymotrypsin whatever protease we want okay so after using all this proteases uh, trypsin or chymotrypsin whatever according to our choice uh, we will use them and after using them uh, what we will do we get the small fragments right so at the very beginning so okay so what we can do here okay so what we can do here as we can see that we get the lysate and we can directly take the lysate and uh, do for the, uh, go for the digestion or else we can load them into the gel and then take the gel and we do the in gel digestion for the in gel digestion we must elude our protein sequence our uh, protein fragment from our, from the gel and for this elution we must rely on this elution kit and this elution kit as we can see it is looking like a syringe like structure which is having filter on it and when you load those uh, sequences when you load those uh, gel onto this uh, wheels or onto this uh, chamber and we use the buffer the buffer will elude and de digest all the gel particles and it will lead up to simply uh, the digested protein fragments which will be taken from the bottom like that okay so we can get the small fragments now once we get the small uh, fragments uh, or, or or not uh, once we get our protein uh, or not uh, not yet fragmentized so once we get our protein sequence here we must go for the di digestion so it's called in gel digestion remember if you want to continue it from the cell lysate directly we don't need uh, in gel digestion in those cases we simply add our enzyme trypsin or chymotrypsin whatever directly so that we having a perfectly oriented and known uh, polypeptide small fragments but if we do the in gel digestion we will again uh, in this uh, elution chambers we also add our digestion enzymes which are trypsin or chymotrypsin whatever so then we get a simple small fragments now once we get the fragments this is our important because this is the preparatory phase for loading this uh, protein sequences into the mass spec analyzer once we get the small fragments we can load them into the mass spec analyzer now once we load them in the mass spec analyzer we get our mass spec results now what we can do from the results because from this results what we can get we can get the idea of the sequence of amino acids uh, of all those small fragments 
Now remember there are some little small many small fragments are out there small and large fragments are out there and we can use two or three and four different digestic enzymes and get uh, different types of fragments according to our choice but we are uh, sure that in all these cases there is a specific cut so at the terminal C terminal amino acid is conserved for a particular type of digestion. So from there what we get here it is so here suppose here we using this uh, trypsin we get this type of cut at the end either we are having lysine or we are having arginine all these cases okay now once we get this lysine and arginine in all these cases so here we go in this case uh, what we can do we are having small fragments like that similarly if we are uh, so suppose let's say here these black segments are uh, for the dig from the digestion of trypsin. Now, once we get this digestion fragments, then suppose we digest it again, uh, and and at the same time we also digest it with chymotrypsin. So we get another uh, fragment. So chymotrypsin fragments giving us this particular ideas. And what we need to get from here is the overlapping sequences, right? So once we get sequences like that, suppose we also give uh, do it uh, via another type of uh, protease, and it is giving us another uh, region. So here it is. Say. So once we get all these small fragments, there is a software that are present. So those we, we feed the data onto the software and we tell the software to overline or to overlap all those sequences and to find the overlapping regions between all those sequences. So they start overlapping those sequences and whenever they find overlap, they start to arrange the sequences in the way so that we get our suitable overlaps. And by getting the suitable overlaps, for, for example, it is denoted with these blue color regions. Here it is another overlap another overlap here so using this overlapping regions or overlapping sequences what we can do we can reconstruct the whole protein sequence and from this whole protein sequence we can imagine how its native structure is going to be using uh, 2d and 3d structure prediction software that are available in different bioinformatics tool okay so this is a process of how to understand the whole uh, protein sequence of a native unknown protein which we have don't uh, we don't know uh, using this kind of trip trypsin digestion technique so trypsin digestion is an important process uh, among many other uh, en enzymatic digestions which is helping us to figure out what is the protein that we are dealing with okay and it is also important to prepare our proteins to be loaded onto the mass spec analyzer so that's it and i hope this video helps you thank you